Welcome to Speechbox. I'm Jeremy Hirsch with a more satisfying conclusion than Interstellar. Um, we've gone through a pantheon of the DC shows. We've talked about Gotham, The Flash, Arrow. Uh, I want to do something a little bit different this week. I kind of want to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I've talked to a few people and um, there's a topic of interest to uh, many of you out there. And that's kind of DC's decision to not utilize their television cast in any of their movies. Um, Stephen Amell, who's uh, Green Arrow on Arrow, uh, you know, was even not, not necessarily coming out against DC or anything, but, you know, a little bit surprised, you know, in the decision to uh, announce a movie Flash, you know, so early on in Grant Gustin's run as the Flash on the CW, kind of like undercutting him a little bit. Um, one thing that Marvel has had is a very, very cohesive universe. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., regardless if you're a big fan of it or not, um, does a very, very good job of encapsulating both the television side and then working its way into you know the movie universe. One thing that season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had was the first couple episodes early on were kind of disjointed in feel and tone, but once they tied into Captain America, the Winter Soldier, it really, really picked up and it kind of came together very, very nicely. Uh, so that was cool to see. Um, Clark Gregg's Agent Colton has been... Um, you know, linchpin in terms of uh, Marvel, both in the movies and on television. And so that type of cohesion has been uh, very nice. Um, this season on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, they got actress um, Adrienne Palicki, and she's playing Bobby Morse, who, if you're a comic book fan, is knows her as Mockingbird, and she's integral to Hawkeye. And so you may see her in future movies and things of that nature, too. Marvel is not bashful of using its television actors in film. Um, when DC was announcing that they were going to do a Justice League film, a lot of people were on sort of a hype train to see, you know, at least Stephen Amell in, in the films. And, you know, Stephen, as much exposure as you can get, you know, obviously would have loved to have been in those. And then a positive reaction to Grant Gustin uh, in his role as the Flash. Now, two different schools of thought. You know, obviously Marvel had the movies going first and then the television. Um, this isn't so much to nitpick or dissuade either way. Because obviously, you know, that Justice League film is going to be successful no matter what you do. But in terms of what could be done or why it might have been beneficial to put the television actors in film. Um, basically, you get a lot more time to connect with characters um, in terms of being able to see them weekly on an episodic TV series. Uh, Stephen Amell has a huge following and... Very, very true that you don't know what you were going to get with Grant Gustin, but now that uh, people have rave reviews about The Flash, it wouldn't have necessarily been a bad idea to do that. Um, the gentleman that they casted to be The Flash in the movie universe, Ezra Miller, it's not exactly like he is a huge name actor that you can sort of justify not using Grant Gustin either. Um, like I said, it's, it's, not a, it's not bad that they're keeping those universes separate, TV and film, but it, it's just sort of intriguing. Um, there was rumors that Jai Courtney uh, might be up for the role of Deadshot in a Suicide Squad movie. Now, again, you know, Michael Rowe is not a huge name actor or anything of the sort, but a lot of people really, really enjoy his portrayal. And the question is, you know, sort of, you're investing so much in terms of your time and attention in a television, uh, television show and with those actors playing them that you become used to them. So I certainly understand, you know, you want to do different for your movies and, you know, several producers with DC have said that, you know, it's, you, you don't want to make necessarily the TV shows beholden to what you do in film, but at the same sense, you know, it, even in the comics, you kind of could have Green Arrow and Flash and so forth doing their own thing, and then there was a mega event, so to speak, um, you know, you bring those characters in, you know, the same can be said in terms of like, just even the film universes for Marvel, um, you know, like in Captain America, Winter Soldier, you know, when there's the attack on DC, you know, where's Iron Man or Hulk or this or that, you know, it's just kind of the pretense that you have to accept that, you know, sometimes characters are off doing other things. Um, so again, I, I don't want to dwell too much on this because, you know, the main focus on Speechbox is, uh, Speechbox is obviously the um, television side of things, but it was something that I was asked to address and just found very interesting. Um, I, I think Stephen Amell... Grant Gustin um, could definitely hang in terms of uh, a feature film. I, I think that Green Arrow, and no disrespect to Stephen Miller, I love what he's done with the character, 
um, you know, isn't necessarily like one of the, like the Holy Trinity is not a Batman or Superman or Wonder Woman. And, you know, cutting out Grant Gustin in that film, like we said, Ezra Miller is not exactly a Ben Affleck uh, that you, um, you know, can sort of justify, you know, placing over him. You know, you, you, you basically have uh, sort of the same name recognition uh, for those actors. So that's just kind of an interesting choice. Um, so I'm interested to see what DC does and um, maybe we'll end up having like a, a Final Crisis movie or, you know, something like a big event where the different universes will sort of intertwine and maybe that will play out. Maybe that will benefit the television cast. Um, I would say this just in general is I've really enjoyed the TV casting uh, for the DC characters and, you know, again, Marvel does a wonderful job sort of who they pick and utilize for like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I'm very, very intrigued this season and season two for uh, what Adrian's going to bring to that uh, Bobby Morse role. Um, Chloe Bennett's Sky character, I think, could definitely be uh, something a little bit different and maybe we'll see in a future film. Season two definitely seems to be building to whatever uh, the next huge sort of thing in uh, Marvel's going to be. And I don't even necessarily think that's Age of Ultron. They could be building towards something like maybe an Inhumans movie or something for that effect. But, you know, definitely still worth paying attention to what's going on in these TV shows to sort of get a bigger picture um, in, in those universes. So definitely something to watch, definitely something to enjoy, and uh, doesn't diminish the impact or anything that those actors bring. And in the closing bromant of the week, I wanted to give a shout out to a um, YouTube series. Uh, it's, an it's an independent series. It's not done by DC, but there's actually a uh, Nightwing series that was done that was fairly interesting. You got Nightwing, there's, they do utilize Batman, Robin, Red Hood, Oracle, uh, and an interpretation of Deathstroke. I will put the link to that in the description as always, and you can follow us on Twitter at DJHirsch42, uh, like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash speechbox42. And then also, last but not least, subscribe to this page, get our weekly videos. Uh, we are gonna take a little bit of a break with Thanksgiving coming up. I wanna wish all of you a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, always be a fan. Fuck Patrick Osborne. You were right at eight minutes.